We're back with Representative G.A. Hardaway on Open Line tonight as we talk about uh, 3D printed gun blueprints that are out there right now on hold and not released to the public. Let's go to Lee, who's been holding patiently. Hi, Lee. Welcome to Open Line. Uh, hello. Yeah, I just wondered, uh, why could we not have a law or a federal regulation that requires 3D printing guns to have a, uh, a, a serial number applied to them that they get from the federal government and anyone caught without a, uh, a, caught with a gun that didn't have a serial number on uh, should go to jail? Okay, let's listen. Well, and he's hit one of the points that was brought up in the lawsuit, uh, and that law enforcement uh, has uh, has strong concerns that when they're investigating crimes, one of the more critical pieces of evidence is being able to trace a weapon. Looking at that registration number on, on that number, uh, serial, on, on number serial yeah. number on the weapon, and being able to trace its history, right? You can't do that with a 3D printed weapon. And any time you, you talk about trying to get in and, and regulate what's being printed in terms of it's already a weapon, and now you want to uh, make sure that the weapon has some type of uh, serial number or identification uh, point, that's awfully difficult. I don't know that that will be possible if the technology was such that the printer uh, was automatically going yeah. to do it. Pre-programmed, right? Pre-programmed. The manufacturers of the printers mm -hmm. would have to have that printer's computer recognize what it's making and when it makes, it starts it creating a, uh, any it, kind of a design that triggers w would say this this needs to be registered. And, uh, correct. Yeah, mm -hmm. interesting. So. I want to read a little more of uh, Representative Hardaway's letter. Uh, he co-wrote uh, to General Attorney General Herbert Slattery. Part of it is about the consequences um, that you said you you think would if these blueprints were released and um, were out there for anyone. You said that the consequences would be immediate and severe, and I'm quoting now, instantly any person in the U.S. or abroad with access to a commercially available 3D printer will be able to possess almost any type of weapon from 50 caliber handgun to semi-automatic assault rifle. And then you go on to say it would be the single largest proliferation of weapons in world history. That's a bold statement. And that's the truth. Those are the facts. Uh, there's no limit on where this technology can and will lead. And I used my cell phone as a, uh, an example earlier that the technology now within that cell phone is more than what put a man on the moon. Yeah. And it hasn't taken that long for it to happen. So the fact that the information is out there, uh, it's not as, uh, it's not as, as pervasive as it could be. Uh, so during this little time that we've got where we've slowed it down, then we've got to use that time to address the, uh, the, the laws on how we can regulate this particular type of weapon. And it is a weapon. We define weapon uh, in state law. We define weapon uh, in federal law. It meets that definition, sure. but there's some vagueness. So we've got to go in and make sure that the language specifically addresses these 3D weapons. Let's go back to the phones and welcome Lucy. Hi, Lucy. Hey, y'all. Hey, hey go Lucy. Ahead. Good evening to oh, you. Oh, I tell you what, uh, I'm going to make a couple of comments and then I'm going to tell you what I really think about this. Okay. Uh, I had a real hardcore civics teacher in high school, and, uh, you know, I thought I understood civics, you know, the Constitution and stuff like that, but here lately I have been corrected, so I'm going to go by using that logic, but first I want to uh, say something about you, Mr. Hardaway. I'm assuming that when you're legislating up there on Capitol Hill, you are debating common sense and logic and stuff like that. But I heard a quote the other day, and I think it goes back to World War One. It was, uh, patriotism is the last refugee of the scoundrels. And uh, 
I had the Second Amendment explained to me again the other day, and this is the newest version of the explanation of the Second Amendment, that the Second Amendment says that if the government gets guns, we get guns as citizens. If the government gets grenade launchers, we get grenade launchers as citizens. If the government gets anti anti aircraft artillery weaponry, we get that as citizens to protect us from the tyranny of our government. So with all that being said, since I guess public schools are the government and they're our enemy, we've got our children now turned against our own public schools that they go to. I say let these people make their 50 caliber weapons at home and then they can clean up their bloody mess when it's over with because I am really getting sick and tired of hearing all this ignorant stuff about the world is coming to the end because there's 13 letters in one word and the same 13 letters scrambled up in another word and it must be a conspiracy. So, Mr. Hardaway, if you could sell some steaks and some vitamins, you could get this lawsuit passed quickly. And thank you for listening to my nut job remarks tonight. Thank you, Lucy. She had a lot to say, for sure. Yeah, thank you, Lucy. Um, so she talked a little bit about just go ahead and let them let them have their guns and clean up their own mess. But the issue is is public safety, is it not? When we talk about it is, and and I'll read you uh, one of my paragraphs. It is by no means an exaggeration to say that the ability of this state and other states to enact, enforce, and successfully implement sensible public safety oriented gun control is at stake in this matter. The defense distributed CEO acknowledges as much. Indeed, that is his aim. As he has stated publicly, quote, all this parkland stuff, the students, all these dreams of common sense gun reforms, no, the internet will serve guns. The gun is downloadable. No amount of petitions or die-ins or anything else can change that. Now that's a quote. That's a quote from the uh, the guy, the founder, uh, that that wants to uh, uh, make this blueprint for 3D uh, mm -hmm. guns available to the world. And I would suggest that uh, we talked a lot about the domestic. Uh, situation and how it would be influenced. But keep in mind, one of the biggest threats to the United States is foreign terrorism. So if we've got individuals who are here and they can access the necessary weaponry and organize, we haven't seen terrorism yet. We have to have common sense regulations in place for the public safety. Let's go back to the phones. Jerome has called back. Hey, Jerome, thanks for calling back. Hi, yes, sir. I, I thank you for taking my call. Sure. Uh, gentlemen, hello again. Yes, sir. Um, Mr. Hardaway, I don't know if I'm, I don't know, should I call you Representative Hardaway? I don't know your title. I don't know the it's representative. I don't yeah. mean to be rude by saying that, so I'll just yes, call sir. you Mr. Hardaway, sir. Um, I was wondering, I had two questions. Um, what are your thoughts as a state representative um, and having armed security protect all of you. Uh, and my second question is, you just stated on the call from, I think Miss Lucy that just spoke, um, that illegals should not be allowed to get firearms. Now, my question on that is, what is your, your, your thoughts on, the, uh, on, on immigration, illegal immigration and stopping it, maybe building a wall, et cetera? And again, gentlemen, I thank you for your time and have a good evening. All well, right. clarification, the word illegals did not come out of my mouth. Yeah. You know, that's not the way I talk about immigration. And I'm not sure what his first question was. Uh, just about, uh, um, do, do you like to have, uh, as a representative, as a lawmaker, having state police protecting well, lawmakers on the Hill? They are armed. Th they are armed, and uh, there's... A reason that they're armed, they're armed not only for the protection of the lawmakers, but keep in mind, 
I serve in an office that belongs to the people. Capitol Hill has chambers that is often referred to as the people's house. So when visitors come, they have a right to expect that their security is guaranteed by the, uh, the state of Tennessee. When we have staff persons, when we have interns, young people who work for us uh, as getting college credit, sometimes for mm -hmm. uh, money, sometimes uh, for the thrill of it all. The experience, uh, right? We have to make sure that we look after their safety. I'm a practical guy. I have guns. Okay? If you break in my house, you're probably not going to break back out. Okay? So I believe that you have a right to self-defense. I believe you have a right to guns in order to achieve that self-defense. But the 10th Amendment gives states the rights to put regulations in place that will protect the public, serve the interests of the public, and that's what we've got to do. So it's about common sense uh, laws that uh, will uh, regulate uh, uh, guns to the point to where those who should not have them sh won't get them. Those who should have them uh, will have them available in order to carry out uh, their interpretation of the Second sure. Amendment as uh, guaranteed by uh, state law. Jerome, thank you again for the call. Before we take another break, I want to take one more call, uh, Taylor. I'm just going to go ahead and take Keith on line three. Hi, Keith. Oh, hi. Didn't want to keep you waiting. Go ahead, sir. Uh, yeah, I was just wondering, <coughs> um, I'm over 50 years old, and I remember uh, back in the day, I could literally go into the library, a public library, and get books that would teach you how to make a gun, how to make a bomb. And also, nowadays, you can, you can do the same thing online. Um, if we're going to... Uh, restrict blueprints to 3D print a gun, should we not also take off um, uh, these websites that, that teach you how to make a firearm? Okay, good. They are kind of one and the same, aren't they? Good question. Hold on, we'll listen in. Well, uh, kind of the same. Uh, it depends on how you describe and define kind of the same. Uh, when we're looking at the technology that's available today to instantly create a firearm compared to what it would take for you to uh, mill and uh, uh, beat some metal in, into <clears throat> shape in order to uh, create a, a, a long barrel uh, gun and uh, go get a wood stock and stick it on there and then th start to, um, to create your bullets. That's America. Okay? We're not saying that those who should have access to guns shouldn't. What we're saying is we don't have the laws in place and the technology in place to regulate these 3D printed weapons. And we have to slow down so that we can regulate these 3D printed weapons. I would dare say if we had uh, uh, the information come down tomorrow on how to make a, a nuclear bomb uh, and uh, do it with your, what's in your attic, uh, that we would not have the cavalier attitudes that I've heard, not, not our callers, <coughs> but some of the cavalier attitudes that I've heard coming out of right. uh, D.C. and other places, because the fact is that we've got to catch up with technology, we've got to put the rules and the regulations and the laws in place in order to protect the best interests of the public. One of the things I learned uh, when I got here is that, and, and started looking at technology and how our laws are always, uh, there's always lag uh, in us creating suitable laws to address uh, technology, especially the internet and what's available there is that lawyers and lawmakers tend to look backwards at what we need to do about something that has already happened. The inventors, the innovators tend to look forward and create things that have not been in your right. 
uh, your your field of vision before. So there are no rules on, on how to uh, work with them other than the rules of physics. We're going to take another break, everybody, and we'll take more of your phone calls, wrap things up after this.